Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the Peaks and Valleys Crochet Blanket. This is featuring the new Bernat Color Whirl Yarn. You're seeing different colors of balls being used to create the colors that you see here. So what I'm gonna do today is show you how to be able to do the wave. It's actually really quite simple and you can see that there's a striping pattern. But let me show you the yarn first and then we'll worry about the rest in a moment. So here's the label that you would find Bernat Color World. It's got some samples and this is what the yarn looks like here. It's really quite unique. It's really awesome because you really can hide in dirt really quite easily with the different colors that it is using and it is strategic on the way that these colors uh, do come out in the yarn ball itself and it really does hide any imperfections or anything like that. So if you're gonna have cats or, or whatever this kind of yarn is really kind of perfect for that. So it's like a knit tube and then the interior is kind of stuffed just as you see here which creates a nice thick volume. You're going to need a size Q, a 16 millimeter crochet hook in order to play and that means that this project is gonna work up really quite quickly. So there are multiples involved in this pattern and let's talk about that next. So on page number one you can see that there's a multiple. It says chain 83 for the exact size that we're gonna do up here that, to get that. What we have is that it's multiples of 16 plus 3. So you keep going in multiples of 16. So 16, 16, 16 and when you're satisfied then you can just chain 3. Just keep in mind that when you do any kinds of, um, of uh, projects like that what happens is, is that there is a wave that is involved and the wave goes up and down and up and down and because of that it condenses the chain to be a lot smaller when you put it into wave format. So without further ado let's get started on the, today's project. Before I begin on this project what's gonna happen is that there is a striping involved. So two rows of A, two rows of B, two rows of C and etc. in order to get the sample that is on the pattern. So once you see these, these form 26 rows of the striping pattern and then you can continue to repeat exactly what you have. So it's actually asking you for quite a number of balls because there's a lot of colors involved. Again your creativity you can decide what works for you. So let's begin with the slip knot to start and what we're going to do is you can chain 83 or you can change the size and make it multiples of, of 16 plus 3 at the end. So I'm just going to do multiples. I'm going to do 3 multiples of 16. So just a chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So there is my first 16. So what this would be is coming down and then back up. So that's actually one wave in your project. So do as many multiples as you need or chain 83 and I'll see you at the next part and make sure that you do add 3 at the very end of the chain. So I have 3 multiples of 16 on here. So at the very end just add 3. So 1, two, three and that puts me back in balance. So you're gonna have a very long chain but once you start going in the up and down motion it's gonna start compressing onto itself. Let's take a look at a homemade diagram that I have for you and then we're gonna continue from that point. So here's my homemade diagram and what's gonna happen is that we are going to start with the chain work and we're gonna work our way up. So the first one will be actually a chain three and then the next two are be brought together so it belongs together. The next five then will each be individuals of double crochets by itself and then the sixth one will be five into the same chain. Then it will be five going down and then put five together, five going up, five at the top. So it's a matter of just thinking about in fives. In the next row what happens is that we skipped uh, stuff that we have but it's still a multiple of five. So you have a chain for one, two, three, four, five. So just remember that it's five ups and five downs and the only difference of the second one is that there's more spacing and also that it goes into the back loop only when we go to do that. But I won't jump ahead too far. Let's get ahead and let's go along your first chain first. So let's begin and we're now going to start and we are going to go fourth chain from the hook. So let's do that first and we're gonna double crochet. So, but let's count our way there first. So we're gonna go one, two, three and four. Turn it around and get the back hump of that fourth chain and I want you to double crochet but I don't want you to finish the stitch. So just going in, pull through and pull through two and hold and then I want you to wrap the hook and go for the fifth stitch that which is the very next one. So you just wrap and go into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. This is the very edge so you'll have to do that every time you get to an edge and then you are gonna wrap and pull through all three. So this is technically three together. 
Okay, that's technically what the term is. So starting in the next stitch for the next five in a row, you're going to go one double crochet each. And let's count those together. So we have one, two, We have three, four, and five. So five in a row are double crochets by themselves. So the sixth one, the next one, is going to be five, five double crochets into the same one. So let's just start and that one is gonna get lots in there. So let's just count them out. So we have one to that one and put another one. This is number two. Put another one in there. This is number three. Put another one. It's four. And another one is five. So now we're going to start with the very next one that's available to you and the next five in a row will each be one double crochet. So starting with the first one, so let's count five going down. So we're at the top of the valley or top of the peak and we're gonna go down. So this is one and go to the next one. It's two. Next one is three. Next one's four. And the next one is five. So just remember five up, five down. So we're now, if you look at it from this perspective, you have going up and then now it's come back down. So the next five chains in a row are each gonna be together as a five double crochet together. So let's just wrap the hook, come into the next one, insert in, pull through, pull through two and hold it you're looking for a total count of six of these loops on the hook. So let's grab the next one. So wrap, go into the next chain. This is number two of five. And pull through two and hold that one. And keep doing it. Go to the next one. This is number three. Keep going to the next one. Okay, so I have four so far. And then finally, I come to the fifth one, pull through pull through two and hold it. So these five plus the starting one gives you a total count of six. So if you can see six, then you know you're good. So wrap and pull through all six. So you're now at the bottom of the valley. So the next five in a row is gonna go back up. So let's do that. So let's count those out. So we have one. And we have two. Starting is always the hardest for waves. That's where people go wrong and they quit. So this is two. We have three. Four. And we have fifth one in just a moment. So now we've just come back up the valley. Okay, do you see that? So now we're at the top, so the next one is gonna get five double crochets into the same one. So this is the top of the peak. So let's count these out. So one, two, three, four, and five. So I think I've got you far enough that you can just do the rest of this on your own. So you're gonna come five down. Okay, so go five down and then the next five come together for the bottom and then go five up and then five at the top and then start coming down. So what I'm gonna do is that I'll meet you at the end of the chain to show you how to finish because it's only a partial of the way to finish. So please do that and I'll see you here in just a moment at the end of this chain. So eventually you're gonna come to the end. I've already done my five at the top and now we're going in the down motion and there will be five in a row that is a double crochet. So this is technically number two because I've already did number one. So this is two, three, 
four and five. So we have five going down and then what's left. So we're gonna have three stitches left. If you're off by one, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, but I'm not so in just in case you are I wouldn't worry about it too much just fake it. So the last one the last three will come together for a three together double crochet. So wrap the hook. So instead of doing five together you're only doing three because it's the edge. So just do the one and then collect the next one. This is two and Three. I always find getting started with the waves is a little hard but once you get beyond that it's good. So once you get your third one on there so you'll have four loops this time wrap and pull through all of them. So let's just turn our work and let's quickly review what we have. So we have the up and down motions just like you see let me back out the camera here and you can just see I've gone just a portion of the way I only did three repeats. So there's a total of only three waves for me. So let's do row number two. In row number two we're gonna create those gapping spaces like I showed you my homemade diagram and remember it's still in sets of five and you're still using the same color. When you come to do the one going all the way down then what's gonna happen is that the middle one is gonna be missing here and here and you're just gonna do the first one, skip one, go to the middle one and then just skip one and go to the next one here. So those are not all together like the five. So that's kind of an error that I did uh, when I was writing this. But you know what, that's the thing is that you live and learn. So let's uh, continue then into row number two and let's see if we know what we're doing. <laughs> I have no idea. We'll figure it out together. Okay, so let's start row number two. You're going to chain up a total of three. So one, two, and three and that technically is gonna be your first one of the next three that you want to put together. So the next two in a row in the back loop only you want to put this is gonna be a two together technically double crochet. So wrap the hook, go in the back loop only. If you're new to crochet there's always two strands. If you go into both of them then that's considered one stitch. If you go into the front one that's the front loop and if you go in just to the back one that's the back loop. So let's do that. So we're gonna come into the next one back loop only and we're gonna collect it. So just wrap, back loop, pull through, pull through two and hold it. We're gonna do the next one the same way. So wrap and into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold it. And now we have our three loops on the hook. So wrap and pull through all three. So now we're gonna chain one and then what's gonna happen is that we are going to skip one and double crochet into the second one into the back loop only. And then we're going to chain one again, skip one, go to the second and another double crochet by itself and then chain one and now you're gonna come to the middle one of the next one of the next uh, wave that you see but you're technically just skipping over one and going to the second one over that should be the middle one. So we're going to apply what we know so we're gonna double crochet first and then chain one, double crochet again and then chain one and then double crochet a third time. So last time we did five in the tops we're technically still doing five but two of them are a chain one space. So let's come down the other side. So we're gonna start with the chain one, skip the next one and back loop the next double crochet. Okay, chain one, skip one, go to the next one, double crochet in the back loop. Chain one and now we're going to start doing the base here. So we're gonna skip one and we're gonna put three together. So just going into the second one over. So after you skip one and collect then you're going to skip the next one and go into the second one and collect it. Then you're gonna skip one again and go to the second one over and this will be the third one that you need to collect. So the, there's the three, there's the one you started with so you're looking for four loops. Pull through all of them. So let's continue. You can see that the ridges are forming. So let's continue to go back up the other side. So chain one to start, skip one, second one over. It's always gonna be back loops so I'm not gonna say that anymore. Chain one, skip one, go to the second over. So there's your two double crochets going up. So chain one first 
and now we're gonna go skipping one, go to the second one over which is the middle and you are going to apply a double crochet first, chain one, double crochet again, same one, chain one and double crochet again. And now come down the hill. So chain one to start, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, Okay, chain one and there's your two going down the hill. So after you skip the next one, you're gonna put the next three together. So just put those in, collect, skip one, second one over, collect it, skip one, second one over, collect it. You now have your four loops again and continuing to pull through all four. Now let's go up the hill. So you're gonna chain one to start, skip the next one, single or double crochet in the next, chain one, skip the next one, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one and now you're on the top. So on the tops are always gonna be the same. So they're gonna be double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So do you see how that's going up and down? So eventually you're gonna come to the edge chain one to go back down, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one and then because it's an edge you're gonna skip one and the final three stitches will come together. Okay, so you're not skipping over anything on the edges. So bring the final three together and then pull through all three. And you were technically done this color and you've technically gone up and down. So you have a solid row and then you have one with the spaces that you see in the pattern. But now this color is done. So what we want to do is change out our color and let's show you how to do that next. To change out our color just cut your yarn with a sharp pair of scissors and what you wanna do is just pull through the loop. I'm just showing you a different way of doing it. So just pull through the loop and what you can do is that you can scrunch this up into a darning needle, um, one that has a, a larger head to it and what you can just do is you drag that underneath some stitch work to hide it. So once it's in your needle just drag it underneath. Try not to impede any of the look. Now because this is a tube format you wanna go into some spaces when you're going to do this. It's hard to get it right through the actual tube itself. So just going through once and just pull through it again and go through a slightly different path a second time. If you can do that then it will get it out of the way and you don't need to worry about it going forward. The fact that it's harder for me to get that through means that it will be harder for it to fall back out and then you can just trim it. So let's move on to the next row. So as we start the next row we're gonna go back to doing it solid again and then we'll eventually do the spacing again and then we change out the color of yarn. So I'm just switching to a new color of yarn and I think this color is called uh, Seascape. Uh, this particular one I love the color. So we're gonna create a slip knot just to make sure that it gets stuck into the stitches perfect. And then what we're going to do is just go into the top of the first one and attach it with a slip stitch. And what I want to do is that I wanna bury that yarn strand underneath those stitches when I begin. So what we're going to do in this particular one is that we are going to then chain up three and then we're gonna put the next three together. So when I put the next three together what we have here is that it'll be the next space. So just wrap the hook, go around the space and go right up over top of that loose end and then wrap the hook and go into the next double crochet and then wrap and pull through. And now you have your three on the edge like you did before. So the only difference this time is because you're not working with a chain you're working with the existing stitches that are already there. So because this one is solid the next five in a row which will be these spaces and double crochets will each by, be a double crochet by itself. So let's count those out. So we have one 
and the next one is a double crochet. They're all double crochets but it's just identifying which stitch it is. So that was two. The next one is a space. This is three. Next one is a double crochet. And finally the one before the top is a space. See, so you filled it all in. So the next one here is the top of the peak and in the top there will be five double crochets into that one. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So the next five in a row will each be um, one double crochet. So we start with the next space. So that's one and the next one is here. That's a double crochet. So this is two. Next one's a space. That's a three. Next one's a double crochet. This is four. And the last one is in the space which is your fifth one. So like before, so the next five in a row are each gonna be part of the, of the valley. So it's gonna be the double crochet, chain one, the middle, so that's number three, the chain one, and this double crochet each all come together. So let's wrap and start collecting. So we have one, we have two, we have three, four, and five. So with those five plus the starting one, that gives you a total number of six on the loop or on the hook. So we pull through everything and then start back up. So the next one starts in the space. So we have one and the next one, two, three, four, and five. So by filling that in, the next one is the middle one of the three and that's the top of the peak. So there's five double crochets in that one. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So then we go down. So okay, so we start with the next space. So just count those out. So we have one, and two, three, four, and five. So then the five in the bottom become together. So we start with the first double crochet, chain space, the middle, chain space, and this double crochet. So all those five become one. So what I want you to do is just go all the way across with what I just showed you and I'll meet you at the end of this row just to verify that you're finishing right and then what we're going to do then is I'll start you up on the next row to make sure that you're off uh, on the right track. So eventually you'll come down the last side and you'll do five in a row and then the final three stitches. So you have one, two, and three. Uh, what that's gonna happen is that they're going to be together. So you're just gonna wrap and start collecting. So you got the one, the next one is the chain one space. That's two. And the final one is the top of the, the last one. So there is your three. So that with your three, with that gives you four loops on the hook. To pull through everything. So now you're gonna turn your work and go back up how you already did it. So you're gonna create these spaces like you did before. Do you remember how to do those? If not, I'll show you one more time. And basically you understand the repeat pattern from this point. It's only two rows that you have to worry about. So let's start this row again. We've done it before. So we're gonna chain up three. Okay, and in the back loops only, that's the whole thing. I'm gonna just say this one time back loop, but it's all back loop from here on for this row. So wrap, come into the next one, pull through, and keep collecting. So go to the next one, pull through, and collect. Once you get all three, put, pull through. Now you're gonna go up. So you're gonna chain up one, skip one, and back loop into the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. So there's your two standalones by itself. Chain one, come to the next one. After you skip that, skip that one, come to the next one. And this is the very top. 
So it's gonna be one double crochet first, chain one, one double crochet again, chain one, and finally one double crochet to finish that. So let's go down. So you're gonna chain up one to begin, skip the next one, double crochet in the second one, or this next one after that, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the one after that, chain one, and because they're two by themselves, you're now going to put the next uh, five together. So skip one and or the next three together. So you're gonna skip one, go to the second and collect it, chain one, skip to the next one, go to the second, So let's put the next three together. So you skip one, come to the next one and collect it. Okay, and you skip one, go to the next. Skip one, go to the final. So there's three loops on the hook plus the, the fourth starting one. So there's a total of four and then start going up. So chain up one to start, skip the next one, double crochet in the one after that chain one, skip the next one, double crochet in the next one, chain one. So there's your two standalones by themselves. So you're skipping one and you're back on the top again. So the top of the valley or the top of the peak, sorry, has a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So then you start going down again. So chain up one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one and then you're back at the valley again. So you're gonna skip the next one and start collecting. So you've got one, skip one again, collect the next one which is the middle of the, the bottom, skip one and get the next one. So there is your three plus the starting one. So it gives you number four and then going back up. So chain up one, skip one and come to the next. So what I want you to do now that you know how to go up and down, we've already covered this already before. Just go right to the end and I'll show you what to do just to recap on finishing up and end for this particular type of row. So eventually you'll get to the other side and you're continuing to go down as you know it. So you're just chaining one, skipping ones and eventually you'll have your two double crochets by itself. So chain one and then the final two, uh, three stitches will come together. So you'll skip one first and then put the next one after that, collect and then the one right after that one, collect it and the one right after that. Okay, so you're not skipping any at the end. So those three come together and then just pull through. So this is when you're done this color so you can fasten off and then start a new color and you can see that the edging is really quite neat. The yarn looks busy so that you can keep an eye on it um, for when you're using it. It really hides any kind of dirt or imperfections really quite nicely and this is a really neat idea. So this is the Peaks and uh, Valleys Crochet Blanket, another free pattern by Yarnspirations.com.